Welcome GDLers, this is Bruce from Barking Dog BIM and today we'll get an introduction to the GDL dialog environment. This is a brief intro and will hopefully dispel some of the intimidation you might feel when you first open the object creation dialog. It can look a little bit confusing when you're greeted with what seems to be a very complex set of buttons and windows. First steps, a handy toolbar to have open is the Edit GDL Library Parts. Also make sure that under your work environment, Model Rebuild Options, you have Interrupt with Error Messages turned on. You start a new object, either under the File menu, Libraries and Objects, New Object, or you can click on this button in your toolbar. Please note that when you do start a new dialog, your Edit menu will change content to be GDL specific and the file menu the save and save as are now relevant to the GDL part. I restore down the dialog using this button up here restore down. On a Mac to do this you right click on the tab and choose undock. To navigate between dialogs on a PC it's via the tabs. On a Mac it's either under the window menu, right clicking on your app icon or opening your mission control. Now the buttons are separated into three groups. You've got your object definitions, your object scripts and your object views. The large buttons opens that aspect of the object in the primary dialog here. So as I click through these, you'll see that the primary dialog changes depending on which button I've clicked. The smaller button will open a pop-out dialog. Now this pop-out dialog has exactly the same content as in the primary window. And this is for ease of reference between different aspects of your object when you're scripting. Closing a pop-out window will not close the object. However, closing the primary dialog will Close the object for editing and any associated windows with it. I am just going to open a standard Graphisoft library part. So audience seating 26. To open an object for editing, you can go to the file, libraries and objects, open object. Pay attention to the shortcut that appears there. Or I can click on this button here, open object. The preview area at the top here is very similar to the preview area you get in a standard object here. The button's down the side. There are two plan preview buttons instead of the one in the object dialog. One is the 2D symbol, which is actually a drafted symbol, which generally you don't use. This one is the 2D view, which is generated from the 2D script. This is a front view, which is generated from the 3D script, and the 3D preview, which is generated from the 3D script. The preview image is a static image, and this is the image that you see in your object selection dialog. This is the preview image of all of these different parts. So let's run through the object definition buttons. We only need to concern ourselves with details and parameters. Don't worry about migration components and descriptors. You'll probably never use them. Details is where you select your subtype. In this case, it's a model element furnishing furniture layout seating layout. This is where you define whether it's a subtype or a placeable object. A subtype will make it appear in this list. Typically, you won't need to use that. Placeable means that a user can place it, select it from the list and place it in the plan. If that is unchecked, then objects can refer to it, but a user can't select it. The author, generally this is who pays for the part. The license, you've got a few different licensing options there, and if you're wondering what they are, just click on this info button here. Set password, you can password protect your object. I find it to be more trouble than it's worth, so I never set a password. The description is what appears in your object info. So if we go open our object, Click on this I button here, 
or see the description down there. We'll also see the other information elements that appeared in that details segment. Keywords are what ARCHICAD searches for when you do an object search. So we'll see here that we've got staggered as a keyword. So if I open my object settings dialog and under here I search for staggered, there you go, audience seating turns up. So keywords is a search term. Compatibility options are used very rarely, but it's nice to know that they're there. So open that up and have a look at the different options. I won't bore you with going through them now, but it's nice to know that they're there. The parameters. These are the parameters that appear in the object for the user, and they can appear on schedules as well. You can add new parameters. You can delete parameters. And you can search for parameters. These buttons here are for scrolling through your search results. So I've searched for GS and it will scroll through the GS results. Now the parameters are divided into six columns with adjustable widths to some of those columns. You got the black arrows on the left here, which you can adjust the order of your parameters. The next column is your hide, indent, bold, and unique buttons. The next column is called variable, but that's actually the parameter name. Then your next column is the type. You've got your various types in a drop down menu. Also in that column, you can define whether it's going to be an array or not. We'll save that for another day. Then you've got the parameter. They call it the name, but that's more of the description. This is what the user sees. And then you have your value. And it can be a unlimited value or it can be a limited value. With these display buttons here, an X means that that parameter is hidden from the user. That's what that red X means. The indent means that they will appear in a drop down menu. So if we have a look at this object, we'll see we've got seats layout here with a bunch of indented parameters down here. So if we have a look at this object under the custom settings, we've got seats layout as an expandable sub menu, and we've got all our parameters contained within that sub menu. So that's what the indent does. Bold will simply just make it bold. That's all it does. It's purely display. U for unique is a little bit more complex. It means that when you are injecting parameters within the object settings dialog, so not on the plan, but within the object settings dialog, that parameter will be unaffected. You can see it's not used very much because it's a bit of an obscure use. Now let's look at the parameter name. When I created new ones, it created a automatic default parameter name for me because it checks these as you create them. So a parameter name can't start with a number. You can see ARCHICAD has removed an incorrect or an invalid parameter name. So it can't start with a number, but it can contain numbers anywhere after the beginning character. It can't contain spaces and it can't contain any forbidden characters which are your slashes, your colons, things of that nature. Apart from that, you can call it pretty much anything you want. There are reserved parameter names, which are in the help files. We can talk about that some other time. A little bit more info on your types. You've got your length, which is the most commonly used. Angle, a real number. The difference between a length and a real number is that the length is in your file length format. So in my case, it's millimeters. In your case, it may be feet and inches or meters. A real number is not connected to a measurement standard. It's just a decimal number. Integer is a whole number. Boolean is a yes or no value. Text is text. Pen is selecting from your pen menu. Line type from your line type menu, fill type from your fill type menu, profile from your project profiles, surfaces, building materials from the same, a title 
will have no value associated with it and it will just appear as a bold parameter. So this one here is a title. A separator will just be a blank line. It's not very often used. And a dictionary, you'll unlikely ever use one. The values that are here are the default values that will be set when you first place your object. The description, which they call the name, can be anything you want. It can contain spaces. It can contain numbers or char forbidden characters. That's purely text, just to help the user know what it is you're talking about. Now you can see here we've got various colored parameters. We've got grayed out parameters, black ones, and blue ones. To give you an understanding of what's happening here, blue parameters are part of your object's subtype. So at the moment, my subtype was model element. And if we have a look at these parameters, we can see we've only got a few that came in with that subtype. If I was to change that subtype to furnishing, let's say, beds, go back to my parameters, we can see that it's been populated with a whole lot more parameters that come with that subtype. Now, these are blue, which means the editing of them is limited. I cannot change their name. I cannot delete them. And I cannot change their type. Everything else is up for grabs. The black parameters are parameters that are fully editable. So I can delete them. I can change their names. I can change their types. I can change their display status. You'll notice that we've got some grayed out parameters here. These are locked parameters. They can't be edited except for adjusting their position but I can't edit anything else about them. They're completely locked. And this can only be done with a script command in the parameter or the master script. Let's change this back to just a simple model element subtype. In a new object, you get A, B, Z, Z, Y, Z, X. Those will always be there in a 3D object. These three parameters are special ARCHICAD parameters. And these are the parameters that are appear here at the top of your object selection settings. They are also the parameters that are appear in your info box here. Let's talk about the scripts now. The main scripts you initially need to focus on are the master script, 2D script, 3D, and the parameter scripts. You will occasionally use the interface script as you get more advanced, but don't worry about it at the moment. You will most likely never use the properties script or the forward and backward migration scripts. Leave those scripts to Graphisoft. And let's open a script window and have a look. There are five buttons in every script window. We've got the comment, uncomment, indent, decrease indent, and check script. The comment button will comment out lines of code so that the compiler will just jump over them, completely ignore them. And you can see it's an exclamation mark. So in this case, this line of code will be completely ignored by the compiler, and it is purely there for our benefit so that we know what's going on in the script. The way this button works, if I just have the cursor sitting there and I click on it, nothing happens. You need to have the entire line selected and then you can comment out those lines that you have selected. The same goes for uncommenting and indenting. So if I have the whole line selected, I can uncomment it, I can increase the indent, and I can decrease the indent. The check script button will run through the script and check it for errors. If I click on that, it tells me the script is OK. Now, if I put in a deliberate error in this code and I check the script, I'll get a warning telling me that something's wrong, and it will tell me at which line it is wrong, at line 10. And if I click Stop, it will take me to that line. Now, you will have noticed, if you've had any experience with programming, that line numbers are absent in this dialog. 
the way you need to find out which line you're on is to hit the go to line button which is on your toolbar here or with your shortcut control l or under the edit menu go to line and then it will tell you which line you're on so if i come down here i go control l tells me i'm at line 49. now another thing that we were talking about before is how the main window and the pop-out window have exactly the same content this is great if you want to refer to two different parts in the same script to understand what's going on but you need to understand that if i click in one part of the script and then click in another window it will jump around a bit and the way you prevent that from happening is to insert your cursor where you want the script to remain and then you can start writing things so if i want this window to remain at the top i'll put my cursor up here and then down at the bottom when i start typing this will stay at this part of the window let's move on to the view buttons the 2d symbol window is a drafted plan view your drafting tools are available in this window to draft your symbol as you see fit using hotspots to generate hotspots and everything else that you draft will appear as you've drafted it in the plan view if there is a 2d script present and in this object there is then this symbol will be ignored this symbol only gets executed if there's no 2d script the preview picture this is a copy and paste image so there's no other way to get the image in here you just paste it from your clipboard something to be aware of is that you need to keep the image size small because it will bloat the size of your object if it's say a five megabyte image that you that you paste in this window the standard size that they use is 128 by 128 pixels you can go larger but that's the standard size and if you keep these images at a consistent size they will appear the same size in any schedule that you have them listed in the 2d view is generated from the 2d script you can change your pen set in here but in order to have that take effect you need to click out of your window and then click back in so that it regenerates and although i can snap to lines and hotspots i can't actually edit anything in here or select anything in here as it's generated from the 2d script and the 3d view is generated from the 3d script again in this window i can change my pen set takes immediate effect and the other 3D styles and options are available via your context menu. Now in the 3D view, you will notice that we've got these axes showing here. They're just guides to help you understand where the global and the local axes are located in the script. And I'll talk about that in a later video. The last function I want to talk about is the find and replace, which you use often when scripting. It's available under the edit menu find and replace pay attention to the shortcuts here and at the other find and replace options and it's available on your toolbar here just have a look at those other options that are available to you but this is the dialog with its various options through here just making you aware that that is a functionality in this scripting environment now this find and select function is only active in the current script it's not a global find and select so if i want this to act on other scripts i need to make those other scripts active and then it will do the find and select in that script this concludes our brief introduction to the gdl object creation environment in the next video we'll get an introduction to scripting itself